Hi, my name is Dr. Siley Tokle, and I am a podiatrist, part of the foot and ankle specialists of the Mid-Atlantic. I practice here in Washington, D.C. and Silver Spring, Maryland. I'm also a member of the American Podiatric Medical Association. So today I'd like to discuss diabetes and how important foot care is. November is National Diabetes Awareness Month. And I have a large number of patients in my practice that need regular diabetic foot care. One of my dearest diabetic patients, I'm honored to have you here today, Professor Robert Weiner. Welcome. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, thank you very much for the, uh, for the invitation to appear with you. So my name is Robert Weiner. I'm a longtime uh, juvenile diabetic and I'm a professor at George Washington University. Usually I would be in my office now getting ready for class, but because of the pandemic, mm -hmm. all our students are taught at Zoom and we all have a little bit Zoom <coughs> students as well as professors, but I'm very pleased to be here to, to today. Yeah, thank you. So Robert, you and I are gonna have just a very kind of uh, casual conversation about how uh, diabetic foot care has you know, what it means to you. I think I've been treating you for over five years, which is pretty remarkable. You've stuck it out with me, <laughs> so thank you. Um, tell us a little bit about when you were first diagnosed with diabetes and how important having podiatry as part of your diabetic uh, care team has been to you. Okay, so my diagnosis uh, with uh, type one diabetes was just a little bit over 50 years ago. So I've been living with the condition for about 50 years, and although the condition hasn't changed, the treatment of it has changed a lot. And for people with long-term diabetes, even if you take good care for yourself, you're going to have complications of one kind or another, and the best way to deal with these complications is to have regular preventative checkups, um, and that includes not only podiatry, but also ophthalmology, and of course, talking to your endocrinologist. Yeah. So I've been going regularly um, for many years and I never went to a podiatrist until I had a problem with my foot. Um, but um, since then I've been going for regular uh, maintenance um, mm -hmm. as well as occasional treatments. Yeah, so if I can just talk a little bit about that. In your case, we had been dealing in the past with that non-healing right big toe ulcer, right? And so that was something that I was trying to help take care of in my office setting, but you also got great wound care and, and treatment at GW, including their hyperbaric office. So tell me a little bit about that. How did you feel when you found out, okay, I actually have a serious foot condition um, and it, it's not just going to be let me go in and see her here and there. Now I need to really come in and have this treated. How did you feel about that? Well, of course, I was very worried about having a serious foot condition because I had read a lot about uh, diabetic complications. And one of the most common complications in the old days was amputation of the toes and feet when um, diabetic care wasn't as good as it is now. And right. so I was scared about that. Um, because I kind of like the ability to walk and move around. And so I was very um, hesitant to do anything about it. But finally, I worked up my courage. I, I asked my endocrinologist for a recommendation for uh, a podiatrist. And the endocrinologist said, said I don't know people personally, but um, the foot and ankle specialist of the Mid-Atlantic is well known. Um, and if you have, they have an office near you, why didn't you call them? And so I called them and said, could you please give me an appointment with the first available podiatrist? And it turned out to be Dr. Pumpley. <laughs> yes, that's right. Um, and so, like I said, you've been under my care for several years now. So let me ask you a question. With the current COVID-19 pandemic, Robert, have you been hesitant this year to come in and either see myself or any other practitioner that takes care of your diabetes? Well, I think that's a very good question. In all honesty, at first I was very hesitant and I was basically hiding at home and going out as little as possible. Um, people with diabetes are in a high risk group for COVID-19. And so I was especially careful. 
But I thought after a while that says that I've gotten such good care and it's been so helpful that it was better to take a chance. And so I started by calling the foot and ankle specialist's uh, office and asked them about the precautions that were being taken. And the receptionist described the various, um, the various um, measures that were being taken, including social distancing, right. getting your temperature taken before you came in. Um, and so I worked up my and made an appointment and I could see when I went there how serious the office was about, uh, about taking care for COVID-19 for high risk patients. And since then, I've been back several times. That's right. You have been. Yeah. And if I can just reiterate on that. So not just my podiatry office, but all medical practices right now during the pandemic, we are taking the best measures to make sure that our patients are safe. And so like you mentioned, Robert, for, for our office here, it's temperature checks. It's filling out the COVID-19 questionnaire. It's making sure we don't have packed waiting rooms. We're giving patients the opportunity to wait in their car and having a phone call from our front desk to say, you know what, you're up next, please come into the office. We'll take you right away to the exam room. So again, that exposure with multiple people is very limited. Uh, we also have face masks, face shields. We're also providing those to patients who may not necessarily have a face mask when they walk in. So the take home message is it's, it is extremely important for our diabetic patients, whether again, you're coming to see podiatry or your endocrinologist to just come in and have that routine care. Unfortunately, I think the hesitation has been this year with the COVID-19 pandemic and the high risk nature of diabetes. Let me stay at home. Let me maybe manage my own foot care. Perhaps it's not as important that I go see my podiatrist as regularly as I used to. What we're seeing though on our end is a spike in the number of Patients that have, you know, skin breakdown, ulcerations, infections that haven't been treated for a while, and that could be days to weeks to months. And that is leading to the possibility of having more amputations, right, in a hospital-based setting. That's the scary stuff that we want to avoid. So would you say, Robert, now that you've been back in our practice and you see the COVID precautions we're taking, you feel more at ease coming in for your regular diabetic checkups? Oh, oh, for sure. And I've read in many places on the web that masks are very effective. And I'm always careful to wear my mask and everybody in the office is wearing a mask. Right. And, um, and there aren't that many people there. So I think it's really important that people kind of overcome their hesitation. And just because something isn't an emergency doesn't mean it doesn't need attention. You don't want to end up in the emergency room or in the hospital um, because you um, were afraid to take regular precautions. And life is full of risk. You can stay hidden in your home, but even when you're home, your condition is always with you. And so it's really important to realize that even if you stay home, you're still taking a risk and you just have to balance those risks. And one of the best ways to do it is to go in and talk to your healthcare provider and make sure that you're on the same wavelength so that things don't develop into something serious. And of course, you do have to go to the hospital. The hospital is an even riskier place to go in terms of the COVID-19 situation. So I think it's even more important than usual to take re regular care of yourself for people with long-term chronic illness such as diabetes. Yeah, so Robert, given the, you know, the current pandemic situation, do you feel that it has affected your way of how you take care of your diabetes, whether that means in the form of diet, exercise? So I think that's a very good question. I, I don't have access to the gym, and right. it's considered one of the least safe places to go. On the other hand, um, I live in Washington, D.C., which I sort of coming from New England, I think of it as having a subtropical, subtropical climate. It doesn't really, but it's certainly, um, it's certainly mild enough that all year you can go outside. And so I take walks regularly and I try also not to do exercise that puts too much stress on my legs or feet, but walking is very good for you. And, um, and I think it also helps clear your mind and deal with some of the mental stress of the pandemic. 
right. Just taking a simple 30 minute walk. It's really great for glycemic control. It's great to get that mental um, break. It's great, great to get that fresh air. The other thing too, is you can actually take care of your feet at home. So Robert, answer this honestly. Are you doing your diabetic foot checkups daily? Yes, I do. I, but there are quick checkups. I just look right. to see if there's anything unusual. It would, and just when I'm in the shower, it takes uh, less than a minute. If there's something that I can't, I'm not sure of myself, I just ask a family member to take a look at it with me. And right. if they're unsure, then I just call the foot and ankle specialist. Yeah, no, diabetic um, diabetic foot care at home is, is really simple. Just like you mentioned, you can check your feet if you're able to. If you're not able to, then have a family member or a caregiver do so. Oftentimes I tell my patients too, you know, sometimes it's tough to get, see the bottom of your feet. So just get a handheld mirror so you can inspect that. So with diabetic foot exams at home, Again, you mentioned the word simple, and it doesn't take that much time. I advise my patients to check the top of their feet, check the bottom of their feet, don't forget in between the toe spaces. And what is it exactly that you're trying to look for? You're looking for skin changes. Is there a breakdown of skin? Is there an ulcer, something that looks suspicious? You're also looking for lesions. Did this black mold just pop up, right? And that's something that we can take care of in the office to rule out cancer. You're looking for color and temperature changes that could lead to possibly vascular disease. So again, doing a very simple daily diabetic foot exam is a great way for patients while they're at home to make sure that they're still healthy as well. So anything else you want to say, Robert? Well, I, th I think it's easy to sort of uh fall into routines for the pandemic. And on the one hand, you want to want to break up your routines. On the other hand, it's not that difficult to be in a routine anyway to just include sort of diabetic foot care as part of your routine. In some ways, I think it may be easier because people are not moving around as much. So they have more flexibility in their schedule. So even kind of putting it off because it's just one more thing on your schedule, there are probably fewer other things on your schedule now and so this is a good time to, you know, I think, to start and give it a try. Yeah, absolutely. It's pretty simple. Just pick up, the, you know, pick up your phone, call your podiatrist, come in, have a very kind of safe diabetic foot exam. The American Podiatric Medical Association uh, is advising patients with diabetes to just have a simple three-step approach. Like you've mentioned, the first is just to stay active, right? Get some form of exercise in, whether that means you go out for a quick 30 minute walk. It's also to be on top of your diet because that's a, a, another great way to keep those sugars under control. The second is to keep all your regular appointments. With diabetes, it is a, uh, it's, it, it's extremely important to have your care team in place. And that's not just podiatry like you mentioned. It's endocrinologists, it could be neurologists, ophthalmologists, your primary care physician. So just to make sure that you have all those follow-ups scheduled. And then the third thing is to do that diabetic foot exam at home, check your feet, make sure that you haven't noticed anything pop up. And so hopefully this will put everyone at ease to come in and see their podiatrist. I know, Robert, I have you on the schedule soon. We have an understanding now based on your past history with this non-healing ulcer that for you, it's extremely important that you keep up with those six to eight week appointments with me. Um, and so I appreciate that you are taking that um, initiative to do so. So thank you very I much, Robert, for joining me today. Well, yes, one, one last thing. I think one of the things I read, one of the few things I remember from when I was first diagnosed with diabetes 50 mm -hmm. years ago was they said people with diabetes have to be their own doctor to some extent. And being your own doctor includes looking at yourself for medical conditions. It includes right. testing your blood sugar. And in some sense, I sort of think of myself as my own doctor as a general practitioner. And when I reach things, reach condition or issue that as a general practitioner of my own body that I'm not able to handle, yeah. then reach out to specialists like Dr. Culpo. Yeah, and that's why we're here. You have to be your own health advocate, which you are for yourself. But again, it's extremely important to just have that diabetic care team in place. And 
you know, I always tell my patients, I can uh, educate you, I can tell you what to look out for, but at the end of the day, I can't help you unless you come into the office, right? So thanks, Robert, so much for joining me today. Um, and like I said, I know I'm gonna see you soon. So keep up the good work at home. Okay, thanks so much for having me. Yeah, of course. Uh, stay in good health. So if you would like to learn more about diabetes, please visit www.apma.org forward slash diabetes. Thank you very much. Take care.